Good afternoon to all of our viewers. First virtual event space of the day at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And this is a special treat for me. We have Vlasta with us now. I first heard Vlasta's name years ago. So how I came to know about Vlasta is my original mentor is a friend of hers and a huge fan of her work. So I've been hearing about her work for years and years and years and years, how good she is, how amazing her, her work is, her body of work. I looked at it, you know, for the first time when, years ago and I'm like, yes, she's amazing. And all these years later, we're finally connecting. I finally have you here. So thank you to Kevin Alex, who is my very first mentor I ever had when I took photography seriously, um, who introduced us. And Velasta, it is a pleasure to finally have you gracing us with your presence here. Thank you. This is fun. This is like the best introduction. I'm like, wow, making me feel all special and wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Kevin, the OG mentor to every up and coming photographer. Yes. Kevin, if you're listening out there, which I hope you are, um, that, that is your calling in life other than being a photographer, you have to inspire people. He's, he's been a great inspiration to us. Um, yep. So for all of you out there that are tuning in, uh, we will drop her website. There's a lot of her work that uh, we will not be showing today, but I do want you to check out her full body of work because it really is just amazing and super inspiring. And Vlasta, your work is like one of those portfolios that I look at and I'm just like, all right, I hang it up. I'm hanging my camera yeah. up. I don't want to keep doing this. I'm going to find a new hobby. Maybe I'll go cook or something. No, don't ever do that. I do that with other people. I see someone else's work. I'm like, that's it. Done. Wrap it up. We're not doing this no more. But then, you know, but then I don't. So you come back I, around. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So today we're talking about getting comfortable um, with making your subjects comfortable. So Blasta, you are self-taught when you came to this country you are the very embodiment of the cliche, picking yourself up by the bootstraps and yeah. just making a career out of yourself. So I have a feeling that a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is stuff that's going to apply to everybody, not just the person that went to art school, photography school, who has been classically trained in all genres of photography, but the every person, the person that wants to get started, wants great advice, and they just don't know how to break through on that next level of portraiture mm -hmm. i mean it depends on what kind of i don't know what type of photographers we have on here for example i know you like a lot of uh, documentary style journalistic style photography and i feel like for you necessarily that might not be the most important thing to make somebody comfortable because i feel like there's that uh, tension the discomfort that kind of makes the photo a lot of times but what i'll talk about today is more uh, basically when you get paid to make people look comfortable on camera, that's when you should try to make them look comfortable, you know, and, uh, or any kind of like artistic project that you have. So that is definitely when you want to do that. But in any other case, I don't feel like it's photographer's job always necessarily to make somebody uh, feel comfortable, depending on the style of photography, you know, like any Leibovitz always says that it's not her job to make people comfortable. And that's kind of like where she finds her, uh je ne sais quoi the little something special something in her photos but i personally like to make people feel welcomed and comfortable it makes me feel better so that's kind of my uh personal approach to photography interesting so we're going to dive more into that for all of our viewers you know the drill if you do have any questions at all please feel free to drop them into the Q&A if you're joining us on Zoom. And if you're watching on Facebook or live stream, you can drop them into the comment section. Now we're gonna keep this conversational for you guys. Um, we are going to have some examples of images and Blast is gonna be talking about her process and, and her roots in photography. Um, but if you do have any questions, don't wait until the end, feel free to drop them in. Um, we do want your participation. If there's something that you have a, a question on, don't be shy at all. Um, so Vlasta, take us back. I mean, it obviously all starts when you first got into photography. And I think a lot of people are shaped by their mentors or their first, the first photographer that they intern to. Where does it all start for you, this whole process of finding yourself as a photographer? 
I feel like I started back in Russia in 2009, maybe so a while ago. And it was mostly just my friends in the beginning, like everyone. And for me, it was mostly important to photograph my friends in a way that made them feel beautiful because it was a lot of, it was a time when I was a teenager and you've grown up with all my girlfriends and everybody feels insecure that they don't look good. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. So, and I would get like a point and shoot and I would start taking photos of them and they would be like, oh my God, I look so gorgeous. And that was like my kick. I'll be like, yes, she feels gorgeous. This is what I like. And then it kind of took on from there and it became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think just generally traveling around Russia, traveling around the world, you kind of learn to approach people in a different way. Not um, what I've learned so far, like the biggest lesson that I've taught myself is when you have the intention of bringing love and more of positive attitude to a person there's no way they're going to say no there's no way that your interaction is going to go wrong when your intention is to serve the person to serve them in a way that you can as a photographer to get them the best photo and that's been my guide my guideline with any photo shoot because anytime somebody comes in i know that my goal is to make them look comfortable i want them to feel good about themselves and i want them to come out with great photos that they can use for whatever they need them to for like their linkedin or facebook or whatever they need them for that's all i want to do i don't want to look good i don't want them to book me again i don't think of things like do they think i'm professional enough do they think i look good do i fit in and like all of those like you know mental little things that you have in your head that's what I try to exclude and think only about the person. And that usually serves me better because they use, that's when you, they book you again after that, when you try that, when that's not your goal. Do you, do you change your approach based on, I mean, I know you shoot a wide range of subjects and some of the work is more glamorous. Some of it is more intimate. Does your approach change or what's, what's the leading up? You know, a lot of people prepare for a shoot by getting to know the person um, do you always have that opportunity to get to know somebody or sometimes are you working on the fly and you just kind of have go-to techniques for getting somebody comfortable in, in a short amount of time I feel like most of it is always on the fly like unless it's a fashion photo shoot that's when I cast models when I figure out who's going to be on set that's a little bit of a different situation but when it comes to commercial portraiture or uh, portraiture in general it's usually a situation when I don't really know who's coming because I worked for agencies, I worked for studios, so they would be taking care of the bookings and everything. And I would just only do photography. So my job was to photograph one or two people a day and I don't know who's coming and what kind of mood they are. Do they want to be photographed at all? Do they feel good about themselves today? Like, I don't know anything. I probably sometimes haven't even seen the person. I would maybe guess how they look by their name and that would be it. So I feel like that's why I'm so good at making people comfortable because I just have to be ready for anything. I don't know who's coming, like what's coming my way. Like I, I just have to be like, you know, hold on for dear life and just hope for this. But um, I think that's been the best because I change my approach depending on who's coming, how confident they are. Not necessarily whether they're professional or not, because there's a certain threshold when I want to get great photos, but maybe the person that comes in is so self-conscious they don't like themselves so much so i know for sure that out of two hour, two hour for example photo shoot an hour will be just getting them comfortable and maybe 20 minutes will be like when i get my shots when i know everything's gonna look good so i just i separate my time depending on who comes in and you can tell right away whether they're gonna uh feel you know, just stiff in front of the camera or they're going to be fine. Like you can tell right away just by the way they walk into the room and things they say like, oh, I look horrible today. Oh, you're going to have a hard day today because I look terrible in photos or like, you know, there's a standard uh, like five sentences that everybody says. But <laughs> that's how I change my approach. I don't change my approach depending on like whether it's a man or a woman because everybody's very different. It's more about their personality and how controlling they are. People that like to control usually are harder to photograph because they don't want to listen to you. Like when you try to direct them, that's usually the hardest people. But the ones that don't know anything about photography, I love those people. 
they just have fun. They don't know what's going on. And it's all just moving things, lights and stuff. And they're just entertained by everything that's going on. I love those people the most. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense if you're some of the professionals feel like they might know your job better than you or like they've done it before and they're trying to, you know, well, shouldn't you be doing this or maybe you should do this. And it's it's kind of like like you said, when you get somebody that come in, comes who comes in to have their photo taken with you and they're fresh and they don't know. Um, about lighting they don't know about posing they're kind of just like a it's like a blank canvas so to speak yeah as long as you're really good at directing that's the best and I'm really I'm, good at like positioning them like I know what I need to get out of them to get a good photo even though they feel extremely awkward or when you try to make them um, when you try to get rid of the double chin the biggest <sighs> people often do this which is the worst thing because then you get a lot of neck and not a lot of the face then the trick is to keep it parallel and stick it out like a turkey and they're like i look ridiculous and you're like you kind of are in the photo it looks great so there's, there's always this uh pool of like i know this is ridiculous i acknowledge this but we're gonna move past that as soon as you see the photo you'll be like okay this is how i walk now all the time <laughs> so how much of it is how much is your personality? I mean, you, you have, you're just easy to get along with. That was one of the first things I noticed when we met is you're just like carefree and you're loose. And I feel like that plays a certain part of you really just being able to break people down and, and get their guard down. I think maybe, I don't know. I don't analyze myself. I don't know. I feel like I'm just goofy and that's, that's just where my self-analysis stops I'm like okay they just don't feel threatened by somebody who's um like me that I'm just all over the place a lot of times but um it plays to my advantage and disadvantage depending on the situation there will be some people who will be like so is she like what's wrong with <laughs> so, I just have to take it and be like okay well maybe not today we're not doing Gloucester today we're trying to be professional so it's uh, it varies, but I just try to be, um, to think less about myself. And I feel like that's what makes people comfortable. I'm okay with being vulnerable with them. I'm okay with being, with looking stupid because most of the time they think they look stupid when they try to pose or do something. They just, a lot of people just feel extremely like, uh, it's like an imposter syndrome. They're like, what am I doing? Like, why am I trying to do this? And you're like, look you can't get worse than this. Like you're fine. You look professional. You got makeup on, you got hair done and look at this. Like, so they just kind of that I leverage, uh, making myself look a little bit worse than the situation. So they feel a little bit better, which is, you know, not the best technique in life, but when it comes to photo shoots, it works. I found personally that confidence as a photographer plays a huge part in getting people comfortable. I feel like the more uncomfortable you are with yourself, it's like, you know how like dogs smell fear, they sense fear. Yeah. It's almost like people, portrait subjects or models sense when a photographer is not confident or when they're just like, I don't know what I'm doing or this is not working out or I'm not getting the results I want. Do you feel like you've gotten, as you've gotten more comfortable and confident in your own work that that has made it easier to get people comfortable in front of your camera? Oh, for sure. I mean, you have to know what you're doing. That's kind of like a given. If you don't know what you're photographing, if you don't know that you're lighting, you don't know your gear, your camera, it's hard to make somebody comfortable when you're uncomfortable and you don't know what's going on. Like you have to be in charge. You, you, that's, I feel like that's my, maybe a forte. I look goofy, but I know I'm in charge. Like there's no way I'm going to end this photo shoot and I'm not going to have great photos. Like that didn't happen for I don't know how many years I don't have bad photo shoots. That just doesn't happen anymore. So no matter who comes or how they pose or how bad they are at posing or how bad they think they are at posing, it always comes out good because I know my lighting and I, I know my camera, but at the same time, when something doesn't work, it's fine to acknowledge that and just be like, you know what? This is what I usually like, but right now it doesn't look good on you. I don't like how this looks on you. This is not flattering. So we're going to switch around. Do you mind if we spend five minutes trying different things? And people are usually like, sure, yeah, okay, whatever. 
So I feel like acknowledging what's going on is the biggest thing. You don't have to pretend like you got to figure out when you don't. Like if you feel like something's going wrong, always say it. I don't feel like people ever care about that. People care about integrity and honesty more than you looking good. And I feel like that's when remembering that the photo shoot that you do is not about you. It's not about you looking good. It's about delivering something to the person they came. That's when that kicks in. Like, I don't care if they think I'm professional. I just want to get a good photo. So I'll admit that right now this isn't working and I'm going to switch it around and then it will work. So that, because when they see the photos, they'll be happy. So does that make sense? No, totally. I mean, it's, it's a mindset that you, you kind of set the tone for, every shoot and if you don't have the tone set i think that's a great point that you bring up is a lot of people they're a little too loose and free and they're just kind of like all right well whatever goes we'll see where it goes and it's okay to be it's okay to roll with the punches and hey things don't work out so i'm gonna adapt and i'm gonna be flexible but ultimately it sounds like you're in total control and it's never it, it never gets too far out of your reach to shoot that, hey, if this isn't working, I'm going to go in a new direction. I'm going to redirect. Damn it, I'm going to get what I want. By the end of this session, whether you like it, whether I like it, it doesn't matter. Anything else, all that matters is getting good photos. Yeah. And I think um, you know, it's, it's also not only about me because sometimes you have a team of people on set. You have to have makeup artists, maybe hair, maybe stylists, depending on the budget usually that's how it goes um and those people have to be on the same page as you are they have to know the same things as you are especially makeup artists when it comes to commercial photography because makeup for photos especially if you sh shoot in a studio with strobes you have to put twice as much makeup for the person to look the same as they do in real life because the flash takes off a lot of makeup and that freaks out 90% of people when they see the amount of makeup they have on their face that they're just like they freak out they're like oh my god I don't look like myself this is this is terrible wash it away so you have to like you and the makeup artist have to know that that this is going to come up and so before we even begin doing makeup for somebody we tell them you might feel in the end that this is a lot of makeup but in the photo it will look a lot less and usually I will take a photo and show it to them and like yeah it doesn't look like I have anything on so things like that like little things like you have to know what's going on and before it happens you kind of like send the hook so like before you feel this I know that this is going to happen so by then when it happens like oh yeah those two know what's going on like the photographer or the makeup artist they got me like they know the process so I don't have to worry about it too much I feel like that's what it is and there's a thing that I call uh, the good doctor a technique that anybody can use anybody who's listening in it's almost like when you go to a dentist you know and because they're putting stuff in your mouth they have to explain like you're going to feel a little bit of vibration or pressure so when that happens you're kind of like oh yeah he said it's going to be like vibration so that's what I feel so you feel okay and I think it's the same thing for people. You explain to them what's going to happen and how it's going to go. And when it happens, they're like, oh, yeah, she just told me about this. So, like, they feel better. And they're like, oh, yeah, she's okay. Like, she knows what's going on. And they feel more taken care of. I feel like that's, that's when you have to be confident. You have to know your process really well. So when the person comes in, you're like, okay, I know what's going to happen. I know how you're going to feel. And so you can prepare them for that. I, I'm writing that down. I'm over here taking notes. I'm like, that's such an awesome analogy. The good doctor. I never thought about that, but it's totally true. I just went to an oral surgeon the other day and it's like, you're so right. It's like you sit down and he's explaining the procedure and he's like, okay, it's not going to hurt. You're going to feel a couple seconds of intense pressure and this and that. And I'm like, okay, now it's in my head so I can relax because it, it really is now the oral surgeon's not taking pictures of me, so it doesn't matter how I look. But when you're in that situation where you're taking pictures of someone, every little thought that goes through someone's head, it's like, I look at myself all the time when, you know, I do YouTube stuff. Here, I'm, I'm being recorded online. And sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, it'll pop up on my newsfeed and I'll see my face and I'm like, what was I thinking there? Like, my face just looks like whatever. And we don't realize the 
the expressions we make when our heads in the clouds or, you know, so I think that's why, you know, that's why there's professional models that are easy to work with. They, they can control their expressions. They know how they look at all times, but for most people, that's not the case yeah. where we, you know, we think, we think we look great, but like mm -hmm. our one eyes hang in and our other eyes open too much and this and that. So that's such a great analogy to kind of prepare people for what, you know, like the makeup thing, which apparently I don't wear enough makeup because I got to put another pound of concealer on. I'm going to use that tip as well for my, for my live stream broadcasts. What is, uh, what's something you see now, for those of you who don't know, Lhasa does a lot of um, critiques, portfolio reviews online. So you're looking at people's images constantly. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see this uncomfortability? Are you able to look at someone's oh, yeah. images and you're able to say like, this person did not tap this, their subject's full potential. You're able to see it in the images. Oh, yeah, right away, you can see it. It's always this, the neck. <laughs> It's like, a, because anytime you feel like you need to protect yourself, you protect your neck. And so a lot of times when it's like this, like half of the neck is covered with a hand, that's it. Like you got to do something like something like this is different, but this is like, or just the dead eye when I see a portrait and it's like a deer in the headlights and you're like, Oh no, <laughs> you should have like spent another maybe 15 minutes just talking or doing something else. But definitely you can see like the posture, like the awkward hands or like the, just like the shoulders always stiff up when you, uh, like when the person is uncomfortable, it's always like, like a little bit like this, kind of like scared. So, but people could do that depend, even if they feel comfortable with me, but as soon as they're in front of the camera, that just stiffens up. So it's not always you, like you're a bad person. You can't talk to people or anything like that. No, it's more like just the presence of the, the 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 apparatus <laughs> it just makes me uncomfortable <laughs> but there's a quick tip for that you might want to write it down too but any kind of shaking any kind of shaking helps like especially if you do like one of those poses and when you see the fingers people don't know what to do with their fingers like that's like a, a no brain 99.99 percent of people don't know what to do with their fingers so the thing is like to shake it really hard to the point that like you feel like your hand is gonna fall off because they and when you stop, they feel like they're buzzing, like the hands are buzzing. And then uh, the fingers, not the hands. And then when you pose, like they feel more relaxed. They don't look like claws anymore. They just feel more relaxed just because of the blood uh, rushing through the fingers. It makes it feel better. And like shake off the, like, the shoulders, especially if it's a bold man, always ask them to shake their hair. It's like the best thing to, to ask somebody, like shake your hair. And he's like, what? <laughs> but just like pretend like you're shaking your hair in the wind and that's but that's not the i mean it's funny but it also to, loosens up the neck a little bit and so the person doesn't do this anymore like they don't get s stiff in their neck so that's a lot any kind of shaking always helps uh the lips or like the the eyes or the brows it's always like making weird faces I, I have a legend. I don't know if that's actually true. I just tell everybody this is what actors do before they go on like screen, like do the monkey face, like all of that. It relaxes the mouth and relaxes your eyebrows. And so the smile and the face looks more natural. So I kind of like sell it as an actor thing, but I don't know if people <laughs> actually do this. So, you know, take it. You can perpetuate my legend if you want to, but <laughs> how people do it. I'm laughing because I totally do that before I go live. Every every session I do the you just right. I think so it's, I think is, it's it is a thing, mental. Right? I, I think it's mental. It's mental that I just feel like it's like stretching before you go running. If you're gonna go, which isn't that's a whole nother thing. There's gonna yeah. be somebody that's an avid runner out there that's gonna tell me that no, you're not supposed to stretch before you go running. But a lot of people at least they bend down, they touch their toes, you kind of just stretch. like no. Well, we'll get, if somebody is a marathoner out there, please let me know if that's, I, I should know I'm named after a runner, so I should know that, but um, it, it is, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's just, I think getting in the right mental space. So 
who is it who is ultimately the onus on the photographer or the model because i i believe and i always have told people hey a great photographer will be able to get a wonderful portrait at least one great shot out of every single person that everybody has it in them but it's up to the photographer to find find it and tap that potential so is it ultimately if you're not getting good shots i know a lot of people it's easy for them to say well that model was horrible or this person that i took pictures of today just did not want to cooperate did not open up is it ultimately does it fall on the photographer and should should photographers out there if they don't feel like they're getting images that are what they wanted is it something that they have to look within themselves and their own process and how they're getting people comfortable it depends it depends if it's a personal uh portfolio piece that you're shooting and you're not getting something out of the model that you casted or that you paid for or something like that i'd say that maybe is an arguable maybe she's just not a good fit some people just don't uh, pose a certain way that you like they don't have that grace so it's harder for you to make somebody do something and if it's a personal type of work then it gets frustrating because you know but if it's a photo shoot for somebody then i don't really care how hard how hard they make it for me like i'll get the photo whether this is going to be a good photo it's going to be arguable because I will think it's a great photo. Everybody around them will think it's a great photo, but the person might still not think that it's a great photo because, you know, we have a different perception of how we think we look. And then when we're faced with an actual image of how we actually look, a lot of people just don't want to admit that. It, does that make sense? Like sometimes yeah. people get older, you know, you change as the time goes by and there's nothing bad about it. People are a lot more tolerable of how you look. The, rather than how you are about how you look and so when somebody sees especially if they don't get photographed often if they don't take selfies which is you know weird thing to bring up but <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if you don't really know how you look on camera and then you like all of a sudden see yourself you're like what like no this is not a good photo but then you're like but adequately it, this is a good photo like this is actually a good photo but it might take them time to admit that it's a good photo but in general, I would say yes. There haven't been a situation when I didn't get a good portrait. The person came on like, yes, I look good. This is a good photo. Like it may not be many, it could be one only, but then there's always one. And uh, it, it's a combination of things, I feel like. It's how they felt when you took the photo, if they felt good, if they felt good about this whole thing going on, the whole process about me, about the photography. If I made them feel good about themselves, they might feel inclined to like the photo more rather than if they felt bad. But I've had beautiful women who hated their photographs and there's nothing I can do about it. I can make her as comfortable as I can and there's nothing that's gonna change. So there's a, there's a threshold when you should stop trying to make somebody feel comfortable because you're a photographer, you're not a psychiatrist. And a lot of people think they're going to influence the person. And all of a sudden they're going to take this great photo and the person's going to suddenly realize how beautiful they are. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't. And I feel like photographers, that sounds mean, but need to know their place. Like you are there to take a photo, like don't go too deep in, like that's not your place. And this is not the place and time to do that. So it, it it all depends on the person, but I would say definitely you can always get a great shot. And if somebody complains about the model, just, you know, get a life, learn how to take photos. <laughs> That's the number one advice right there so far. Get a life. Now you, you brought up selfies and I'm so, I'm so glad when I heard you say selfie, because it's one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is we, we've both been taking pictures for longer than the, the whole selfie thing has been around and been popular do you think it's made it easier as a portrait photographer that people by and large people are more comfortable with photos of themselves a lot more people know their angles they know what looks good or do you feel like that hurts you know hurts it going back to what we were saying earlier where you might have somebody who swears they look good like this and they don't and they're and you're kind of you're trying to teach an old dog new tricks so has it made it easier to work with people or harder the fact that everybody has a lot more pictures taken of them now it depends on the person i had one time a man he came in 
and seeing all the lights and everything that is going on, he shows me his phone and he says, you know, when I take a selfie on my phone, it flips my face. It looks reverse. I just want to make sure that doesn't happen in your camera. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, it's not going to happen in my camera. So it depends. It depends. So I guess some people, it yeah. just, it makes them, um, you know, which I guess is. Way. Mm -hmm. That is now, not very flattering. I wanted to also go back and touch upon that because we were talking about finger placement before and like shaking, you know, shaking people out and really getting them loose. Mm -hmm. And Kevin and I's good friend, Frank Voronsky, who was another mentor of mine, I, I remember him saying years ago that, you know, it's best to give people something to do with their hands that a lot of people don't naturally know what to do with their hands. And you had said like finger placement as well. Like, I mean, the difference between someone squeezing their arm and relaxing it, or I have a crooked pinky. So it's like, whenever I have it in photos, I'm cognizant of how my hand placement is. Are there general posing tips or guidelines that help people for that awkward hand placement? Mm, I think, Yes and no, because it always varies on the person. There's no one cut system that works for everybody. Or maybe there is. I just like to think that there isn't because I don't feel like I should put people, you know, on a certain sample size. Um, I think starting a photo shoot with a prop is good, especially or like leaning on something a lot of times i would start professional like commercial portrait shoots with like leaning on the wall because they don't have to think about how they need to stand whether they need to be straight or however they just feel supported by the wall and looks good enough and we start there and then you know obviously hands are gonna look good i'll say how it looks like i'll call it if they're just hugging themselves i'm like am i that scared you just holding on for dear life and they're like oh no no so it's always <laughs> like i mean you can I, maybe I can say those things and they just feel natural because that's what I, I don't know, that's just what comes up. But there have been people that didn't take it too well and they're just like, what? And I'm like, okay, sure, didn't say anything. But you know, you have to move, you move, you have to move past that. I feel like in the, uh, in a photo shoot situation, I move past things very fast. If I don't like the pose, next one. If I don't like how this lighting looks, next one. I don't get stuck and just like, try to get the shot with this particular setup that I usually works, but doesn't work right now. So I, I try to move on, like move on quicker and explain what's going on. I feel like that's another thing to tell people what's going on. You're like, oh, well, the lighting looks a little bit harsh. They might not understand what exactly that means, a harsh lighting on your face, but they know that's not good. So we're going to change that. And that's how they're like, okay, we're going to like do something else now. So people are more receptive to anything that is going on when you explain it to them you don't have to explain in depth like expect them to know photography but you know just give general cues or, as to like what's going on that makes people definitely more comfortable putting pens into hands like using a phone but depending on the shot like I'm not a big uh fan of props just because uh that makes the photo um, what's the word maybe conditional like you can't always use a photo when you hold a pen. Like there might be a situation when you just need a photo with the hands regular. So I try to give them the photos that are just can be used in any situation, even if they hate the pens like month from now or they, they have a pen phobia or something like that. And, you know, so I try to just have like a person and not really a lot of, a lot of props. Okay. And I, I want to pick your brain on, so from my days being on the other side of the camera, in front of the camera, I always felt, in, instantly felt comfortable, like I said before, when the photographer was confident. So that was something that for me, I knew that if I'm shooting with a talented photographer, number one, they were going to get some good images. So I didn't have to worry, you know, I know they're not all going to be good, but I knew that I was going to get some images that were going to be great and that the bad images no one would ever see <laughs> they, they would never see the light of day so i know that that always made me feel comfortable where i felt uncomfortable is in the posing like sometimes those uncomfortable poses so like you were talking about you know where your shoulders back and your neck forward and chin down and doing all this stuff where it's like it feels uncomfortable for me and ultimately i just want to look good that's all i want 
no one is able to see if I'm uncomfortable if the photographer does their thing. So for people who might not be as experienced in, you know, so a lot of our viewers are amateurs, hobbyists, beginner photographers who are trying to learn from people such as yourself, tips for this and that. Now, say you have somebody watching who isn't comfortable enough to where they're following tips and following things they've seen online and they're putting models in positions and you know doing all this and moving around and their models just not comfortable so where's that line that you draw between hey you're supposed to feel comfortable but now you should be uncomfortable because this looks better does that make sense like yeah, I feel like there's a big difference with between people feeling comfortable and uh, looking comfortable. Uh, do you know what I mean? Because some people may be feeling comfortable when they're just like all scrunched up like this, but that doesn't look comfortable, but they might feel really great in the moment. So when it goes, as far as photos go, I don't really care how comfortable you feel while sitting or standing because that's irrelevant. We want to get a photo. I would like you to be comfortable if possible, but if it's not happening, it's not happening. We want to get a photo. So looking comfortable is what I'm going for, for in terms of photography and mentally trusting me and feeling comfortable with who I am as a photographer. That's as much comfort as, as I can ask for from a person because I, I can't expect them to be comfortable with, in the situation when there's in the space they don't know, with people they don't know, trying to make them look good in the photo, and it's all like moving parts. Like there's really, especially if you photo shoot like, I don't know, an hour, two hours, usually how long they go, you can't really expect somebody to feel all of a sudden comfortable. That's a little bit, you know, ambitious. So depending, again, some people like younger generation, they feel comfortable faster than the older generation, but I just want them to look good. I want them to look good, comfortable, like they're not, you know, being afraid of taking a photo. They don't look crazy in the photo. So that's all that I'm going for. But, you know, it's in different instances. Right now I'm talking more about like commercial photography. When somebody comes into your studio or an outdoor space where you take their photo, like I don't, some making, telling people like feel comfortable or sit the way that you feel is comfortable doesn't always work. Like you have to, they can sit in a chair, but then you still have to adjust because it's most likely will be like a slouched back or like, you know, something like hidden hands and it's not necessarily very flattering. So you start with them being comfortable and then you adjust. So looking comfortable is the premiums on looking comfortable rather than them feeling comfortable. Yeah, because feeling comfortable in their physical body is irrelevant when it comes to photo. Feeling comfortable in their mind that this is okay, like they feel safe. That's what I want. Like I want them to feel safe in the in the city in the situation. But whether they're comfortable or not, that's kind of like it's gonna last a minute. Like what do I care if you're comfortable for one minute? Like you do you want a good photo? Or do you not want a good photo? Are you like ready to commit to feel uncomfortable <laughs> for like a few minutes? So it's that. Like you know, you want them to be comfortable. That just doesn't always work. It's like the old days of photography where people had their heads held with forceps because the, you know, a single image took a couple minutes. So it's like you had to hold their head still. So it's like they would have like metal forceps. And you look at some of these old images from the early days of photography and it's like, you know, people that don't know are like, why does everybody look so miserable and angry? And it's like, well, because they had metal forceps pinching their head to hold them still. <laughs> so Vlasta, I want to look at some images. I want to see some, some stuff. Let's... uh. Okay. Let's pull up some of these images if we could. And I just want you to talk about them. And I know you hate talking about your work. You're so damn humble. But talk about, you know, your experience in capturing these images. And, you know, I, I want to be able to see, you know, and for those of our viewers who are going to be looking at these, try to see if you can pick, you know, who was naturally comfortable and who had to be worked with. Because I think, you know, I'm going to be looking at images now in a new light. Let me see. I'm trying to make it happen. Should be the big there. green square. You have the if you have the folder already open, it should be. No, it's more. It's mostly just wants me to go in, into my uh, system preferences. Okay, let me see if that worked. Oh, there we go. Do you see it now? Perfect. 
Perfect. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, this man in particular, he was a professional in the sense that he's done it before. He's not a model, but he was a professional uh, writer. So he's done like book covers or he's done some speaking engagements. So he was relatively comfortable. But the only thing I want to mention, like sometimes uh, there's a difference between photographing European person and American person or European person in America when it comes to smiles. Americans like like a big smile with a lot of teeth in it, which feels unnatural to me as a European person. And a lot of like British people, French people, they prefer not to smile that way. But when they're in America, they all of a sudden try to smile like that because that's, you know, that's what's accepted, accepted here. And it just looks a little bit aggressive. Like here, he has better photos when he's slightly less smiling and I prefer those better. But that was his choice just because he's uh, promoting a book in America and he's like, well, I got to be like smiling with all my teeth. So, <laughs> but he looks good. I feel like he looks handsome. Yeah, Amen. definitely looks uh, comfortable. This one, he felt very uncomfortable. Funny enough, he's a runner. He was a runner for Nike and he was trying to do modeling on the side. And so that's what the photo shoot was for, for his modeling portfolio. He being the physically looking great physically, that really helped, but he wasn't very comfortable, like knowing how to pose, just kind of like way too sporty for posing. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have like some sort of like flexibility and like certain level of relaxation to be able to look relaxed in the photo. But this one came out good. He looks good, but he was definitely uncomfortable. You can you can see it in his lips. It's, it's I was just gonna say he he it kind of looks like tight, like he's kind of sucking on his teeth, right? Mm-hmm. Like a little bit. He was all like, mm. is I'm there the is there common spots that people hold their their tension when they when you're taking a picture? Is there certain things that that people should be on the lookout for, like this, like with the lips? My I immediately went to the lips. Yeah, it's usually the jawline, like the lips. And be the shoulders and like the the hands and the fingers. That's usually where where it is. I mean, obviously the eyes, but still, like he looks semi comfortable in the eyes, but definitely not so comfortable in the mouth. <laughs> but still, you know, considering you have to take it with a grain of salt. Considering with an array of photos, that was the best one. So like you, you kind of like okay, well, at least the pose looks great. So we're gonna run with it. Now, how do you how do you approach? Say you have somebody who just naturally they can be as comfortable as possible, but they just have like that's just the shape of their mouth, or they just that's just how they look. Do you do you still just capture that and you just say, do you say hey it is what it is, or do you try to find a technique around it? I'll try to find a technique around it, and if it works, I'll use it. If it doesn't work, then I'm like, well, then we're just gonna stick with what we got and depending on what it is if it's just a photo for their like um resume and it's one photo then it's fine but if they're trying to model and that's how they are i should photograph how they are and not try to um change anything because when they get hired as a model most likely photographer is not going to try to change anything they're just going to photograph what it is and they just i feel like it's more honest when it comes to models to photograph them as they are and not try to mold them into anything because then it's just, you know, for models, they sell what they have, like their face and their body. So it's, you have to keep it real, I guess. But what, if it's for a person and they just want a good photo, then I don't care. Okay. Uh, she was a new model. That was her for, first ever photo shoot. She never been photographed before, never modeled before. That was her first time. So Interesting. She looks comfortable. Yeah, I mean, she works as a model now, so it worked out for her. <laughs> I feel like it usually shows in uh, mm, choices of the clothing that they bring. If it's a new person who never modeled before or if it's a person that uh, had some kind of modeling experiences, just because of the colors and the fits that a model would choose rather than a regular person. So here you can't tell, but the jeans weren't really flattering. So if it was a full body, it wouldn't be the best full body. But when she's sitting, it looks great. It looks like professional, like it's a good shot. Uh, but she looks good. Yeah, definitely. Looking back, I might have like brushed the curls a little bit more, not as 
curly, curly. The, the, the first thing I looked at was the hand with what you were saying before about the hand on the neck, but if it's, it's not like covering her neck, it's kind of just like there for placement. Yeah, and... for just like to support her head. Otherwise, like, like you got to put the hand somewhere. Uh, this one, she's, um, she was really comfortable. She was an Olympic uh, figure skater. Uh, I think her name was Meryl, Meryl Davis. Yeah. So it was for her like commercial um, side of things because she also, I feel like a lot of personalities do also like just sponsorships and different kind of uh, magazine interviews and stuff like that. So it was for her. She is obviously knew what she was doing. She was super comfortable, like super cute and smiling, like super easy to work with. There's really minimal work that you have to do when somebody is a, a professional model or a, like a sports athlete. They usually know how to pose. They know their body really well. So athletes usually pose pretty well. Interesting. Now we had a question come in from one of our viewers, Karen, who's watching the live stream. Um, just doing a number of senior portraits. How do you get a teenager to smile? And if I could take it a step further, um, tips for getting teenagers to look comfortable in their senior portraits. Mm, I think acknowledging, uh, depending on what your age is, if you're older or if you're younger, it, it's a different dynamic. Because I'm older, obviously I'm not a teenager. I think a lot of validating of their experiences would be the place where I would start. I'll validate how hard it is to be a teenager to begin with. So if you, they don't want to smile, it's because being a teenager is hard. You know, you can start there. You can start there. Just acknowledge how hard it is. And that might get you a smile right there. So you never know. I feel like uh, when it comes to kids or teenagers, always validating how they feel, treating them like adults, uh, speaking to them as an equal rather than not be patronizing that's the place where you should start when you photograph them and then you get the same respect back that's how i found uh it, it worked for me most of the times and if the teenager doesn't want to smile like i wouldn't push it like i wouldn't push it at first but then i would just do something dumb when they're just like they're gonna have to like crack out like for something and then maybe they'll loosen up after that but i uh, if somebody really just doesn't want to smile you just not i i wouldn't push it I would just be like, okay, well, you're going to be the serious one in the array of photos. <laughs> this is what it's going to be. But yeah, just generally validating and acknowledging who they are and what their experiences are will give you more of a better reciprocity. I just found a trick that works for my son. And he's younger, but I always feel like when, so when I tell my son to smile, he makes this really awkward smile. He like... Mm -hmm you know, sucks his lips in. He looks like Fire Marshal Bill from the old living, uh, living color. And I started telling him to laugh instead of smile. So mm. he does this, ha ha. And it, I found that sometimes when certain people, when you tell them to smile, they do a very fake plastered smile. But mm -hmm. if you tell them to laugh or make them to laugh, you can kind of catch in the mode a more natural. So I don't know if that works for anybody out there, but that's my little... Last is the professional here. I'm just, you know, I'm just the guy who. Uh, I think it works. Like if if you have somebody smile and you catch the face like right before the smile is done, like before the laughing is done, because you don't want a photo of them laughing because that's not like a photo. <laughs> yeah. And then, but you don't want when the the laughing is done. So like if you can catch that really second when the face is relaxed and friendly enough, but not like. <laughs> crazy looking anymore <laughs> that's that's the one sometimes i would do i would have people laugh really hard and then i'd take their photo just because they look friendlier like their face looks better but yeah i feel like if you tell a teenager to laugh they'll be like you get like the yeah, opposite yeah. reaction because teenagers are, teen angst. it's a whole another breed so yeah uh this is also another first time model that was her. She showed up six hours prior to the photo shoot. Wow. So, really? And I had, I had somebody else. It was an elderly uh, lady that was supposed to come in. And then she walks in. And I'm like, I don't think, I don't, I don't think you're my client. Like you're supposed to be 65, <laughs> I think. Like, you don't look 65. And she's like, oh no, you're, I'm your like evening uh, appointment. And I'm like, what are you doing here in the morning? Like, what's going on? <laughs> She's like, well, I just thought I would like, you know, come and check it out and just like, you know, hang out. And I'm like, mm. 
we don't do hang out unfortunately <laughs> it was cool she was super cool uh i mean a lot of people also bring friends she brought about a bunch of friends just to feel better and feel comfortable i'm down is that something well. you normally allow uh depends um i've had one time person brought 13 people 13 people to a shoot they weren't doing anything they weren't like a part of the team they weren't taking like behind scenes or doing anything they were just sitting around and that was, i was like maybe this is my limit I'm like more than 13 <laughs> i cannot take because at that photo shoot i was just i'm an extremely patient person but that was like my i don't think i can take anymore <laughs> <laughs> But she looks uh, she looks great. I mean, for a first time model, she looks yeah. great. Yeah, she. I mean, I feel like in this instance, uh, a healthy amount of selfies that she done prior helped because she knew how to turn. Like, it depends on the person because I feel like she felt the lighting better than somebody who never photographed themselves before. She saw where the light comes from and she knew to turn that way, so she knew her face looks more flattering when there's more light on it. And you kind of know that when you use your phone because you see how your face changes as your as your camera turns. So that is like, it's a skill. It's a skill. And I feel like for models, that's the biggest skill to know the lighting, where everything comes from, and to kind of live in that light. That's a great skill for any model when they just like know where to turn. So that was her. <laughs> Velocity, you got that down by now. You got the whole the head turn and the, sh the hair shake <laughs> you think so but put me in front of camera and none of this happens that's what we're gonna do next time we get you on we're gonna do we're gonna use all your tips on you we're gonna we're gonna have a group photo session <laughs> i mean i know they work because i apply them to myself but at the same time it's a certain like i'm an, a, a, a nervous goof so i just start doing all of the like you have to get past that stage like you, you get like 20 photos of like terrible and then you might get something good so you have to be patient with me too <laughs> uh this one also surprisingly she wasn't a model and that wasn't for her it was for her linkedin and she was a graphic designer but then i'm like girl you you should try you should consider consider modeling because i mean she looks that's great. a linkedin photo it was supposed to be her linkedin photo but then when i wow. took it and i was like i don't know this could go further i think linkedin ain't ready I know. I, I, I need to. I need to have you do my LinkedIn photo. Wow. <laughs> I Damn. always ask Kevin to come in for his LinkedIn photo. He never came. I don't know. But, Kevin, come on, man. Come on, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, so she felt pretty natural. I feel like women, younger women, feel a little bit more um, relaxed because maybe they like to take their own photo, and there's just a certain maybe a connection between a woman and woman. Is, of the same age they trust me more so there's a certain level of trust that she didn't feel like she needs to be stiff but there were some horrible photos too so you know you've seen like the the top well i was going to ask you about that because i think especially now in this age of you have a lot of male photographers where mm -hmm. it's now coming out there was just another one that just came out today um you know with male photographers um acting inappropriate with female models and I was going to ask you if you feel like, um, you know, a woman photographer generally, do you think is going to be better received by, especially in this day and age, you know, years ago, it, I don't think it was as much of an issue it was more of a hush hush thing. But now photography is more out there. It's more popular. It's, you know, 24 hour news media, social media, we're hearing about it a lot more. Do you feel like that has something to do with you know a female connection where hey like you said she's a young woman i'm a young woman i feel more comfortable with her i'm able to open up better yes and no i don't feel like it's a male problem i feel like it's a problem of um unrealized sexual desires in men i don't want to say like all men are gonna make women feel uncomfortable or they can't do certain type of shoots i think it's more of how um men behave generally so it's not men that particularly is a problem but the behavior the toxic masculinity or whatever you want to call it that is the problem not the men so i try to separate those because i don't want to bash there's you know millions oh, millions probably thousands of great <laughs> male photographers that do really great work but there's a certain type of behavior that is not accepted anymore and i'm personally am happy about that 
But I want to, I don't want to say that all women photographers are angels. There are some women because there are some women, you know, you don't want, you don't want to mess with, but uh, I think it's just more unspoken when you see a girl and you're a girl, you're like, oh, thank God, you know, thank God. <laughs> but it makes sense. At the same time, you may feel apprehensive when you see a man, but at the same time, five minutes, 10 minutes into a conversation, depending on what that man is how he behaves it might be a different it might be an equal situation but just like he needs a 10 minute of trust uh conversation kind of going so he, she knows that he's somebody that she can trust but at the same time when i walk in into a situation where it's all male that i need to photograph i have to prove myself as a professional because i'm not being taken seriously so it's a it's a it's a come and go. There are certain things that work for me. There are certain things when I have to try harder. When, as if you would walk in as a white male photographer, you wouldn't have to say a thing. And people would be like, he's a professional. Where I have to be like, well, you know, I have like 12 years of experience and this and that and this and that. And the, it's, you have to have credentials be for, for me to be taken seriously. So it's, mm, it's different. But okay. it's interesting. Yeah. So I feel like some, some men would feel more comfortable with me, especially fathers. I love working with mothers and fathers. They're just the most amazing people to photograph. They're just, I don't know, they have the empathy that single people don't have. That sounds mean, but the amount of empathy that, especially fathers, because not a lot of fathers are present in the lives of their children. And so the ones that are, are usually like chef's kiss, like the most amazing people to photograph, especially me being a girl and if they have a daughter, Mm, that's it love it <laughs> love it like girl dad you like a queen i love them it's like the best connection because they just like want to they want to do good because they feel like uh like a fatherly figure so they pose better and they try to be like like a good good dad to me so i love that now i know we're talking about comfortability but we can't escape the inevitable lighting question here one mm -hmm. of our uh, amazing viewers matt spinetta is joining us on zoom here welcome matt and he wants to know about lens and lighting choices. We're, we've seen a couple of very different looks here, all equally beautiful. Is there a lighting setup you favor or what or do you shoot with a portrait lens? What, uh, what's the gear situation looking like? Uh, well, I'll talk about this particular photo that makes, makes it easier. Here, it's an 85 Carl Zeiss lens. I think it was a Canon camera. I'm not sure which one because it, I remember it wasn't my camera. I shoot with Nikon, but I think the studio had a Canon. And there was just a big strobe with, um, I don't know the professional word for it, that you know the, uh, the grid that you put over a strobe. Mm -hmm. So basically like a giant strobe put a little bit far away with the grid and that was it. There wasn't okay. really anything else. Is that is that a general? Do you like you know? Are you? A, I know some people are love to use a beauty dish or and one one light setup. Do you get very complicated with the lighting setups? Depends on the face. Depends on okay. on the situation. If it's a just um, LinkedIn or a commercial portrait when somebody needs to look good, usually like an even lighting. So a giant like a giant strobe put a little bit behind you for it as for as far as I can because I had a small studio and that would usually gives me like a really nice even lighting like a nice shadow on the side and that works but depending on the face certain certain type of noses don't do really well in certain type of lighting so you have to adjust maybe have a, a bounce somewhere on the side it really depends I don't have um, a way that I like to photograph I don't have a setup that needs to happen for me to get a good photo it always depends on the person and their face and the amount of time that i have it depends on many things i don't feel like sticking to one setup is beneficial to anybody there's a certain type of lighting you should love like you know you see a certain uh someone's photography and you can see a type of light they use but it could be different sources it could be strobes it could be natural light but it's the same style that you see over and over and over and i feel like that's what i try to aim for i like a certain type of lighting i like to, a face to look a certain type of way but how i get there i don't really care like i'll use anything whatever i have okay. i'll use it just as long as it looks good and to my liking i'm gonna say 
Now, we just had a viewer, our viewer, Lori, ask about that gear, how you had said it wasn't your camera. Now, do you generally, um, nowadays, was that, is this an older picture and you were using gear that was with the studio or are you generally using gear, you know, various gear or do you stick pretty much to your own setup now? Mm, it doesn't matter. I like to be flexible. I feel like for me in the time, it was more of a challenge. I haven't used Canon and I was like, well, let me try. Like, I want to learn Canon. Like, why not? And so that's what I was like, okay, I'll try that. But um, usually depending on any majority of jobs, I just shoot with my gear. But there's certain types of studios that I worked for, uh, the ones that would book photo shoots for me and I would just come in and photograph. They had their own rules and I was like, okay, this is your rule. You want me to shoot with Canon? I'll shoot with Canon. Like, I don't care. And they would ha give me a camera. So it doesn't really um, affect me. I feel like it, in a, if anything, it ben benefits me that I know multiple camera systems. Interesting. So that. I was good. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I'm like, because I think, you know, you, you develop a relationship and a bond with your gear. And when I switched systems, it, a part of the process was getting comfortable with that gear. And I feel like there was a mental block. I, feel, I felt like I couldn't take the same images that I took before just because I had new gear and I had to learn that new gear. So it's interesting to say that, you know, you, I mean, it really no, wasn't even a thing. Yeah, I mean, I've tried that camera. So it wasn't the first time I ever held it. Obviously, I would go into a shoot knowing which buttons to press. That's the last thing you want and be like, oh, how do I change the story over here? <laughs> that's like, that's it. For a girl, you cancel. That's it. You're fired. Out of here. Throw, so, throw the whole photographer out. Get, get, yeah. get her out of here. So I would know. Like, obviously, I'd know the camera by the time I got to shoot. But it wasn't, I'm not again, like committed to a certain camera. I would try any camera, as long as it gets me the image that I really like. Okay. That, makes uh, sense. that one, I feel like this is an example of good, like hand posing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember this woman, she's actually had a problem when she looked too young in all of her photos and she was actually older and nobody would take her seriously because she just didn't look old enough, but she was in her late forties, but she looked great. Like she wow. looks really young, right? Wow. Uh, What's so her I, secret? I don't know. <laughs> we're going to get her on the, we're going to get her on the event space and find out what the secret is. I think it's just being, she was really sporty and maybe it's like also the, um, the diet in Asian culture is very kind of consistent, which is probably helpful. Um, now what, but, mm -hmm. what are, what are some tips for, you know, what did you do to make her look more more mature and, and less you know less like a younger person was there um, any, any techniques or lighting stuff or was it uh less smiling probably so the more s smiling kind of makes you younger not that it makes you look younger but it makes the an, a younger appeal so less of like a not a full smile but a little bit of like a lighter smile and just some more mm, closed off clothing Kind of more professional, less uh, less makeup, not very bright makeup, just very natural. And editing, obviously not as hard on like editing the wrinkles or anything like that, just keeping more imperfections in. And more about posing, more restricted posing, less of a, you know, I don't know how to explain this. I'll show you. <laughs> I mean, it's, a very, it's, it's a very reserved pose. I mean, it looks like, this looks like a very corporate like this looks like it could be in like a you know like like Marie Claire it looks very elegant it's not you know not teeny bopper yeah so it, it, it's more with the poses and with the face mm -hmm. I mean you can't really make a person look older with the lighting because that's not what you want to do you want them to still look good but you just add an air of more of a professionalism like a little bit extra if the person looks super young uh, I feel like I have somebody like a young, uh, like him, for example, like he didn't have to wear glasses. He, I believe he, he had contacts as well. So he could wear the glasses and not wear it, but because he's a younger guy and he's handsome and uh, they wanted a smiling photo. So you put a tie and you put glasses on and it's already kind of helpful for him. I would have chosen a photo where he's not smiling to actually kind of like make him look a little bit more serious, but the company wanted smiling photos, so that's what it is. But just adding a little bit, I know it's kind of cheesy, put glasses on it or put like uh, a tie, but 
it helps. It does help when somebody's like young like that. Interesting. So I uh, I know we're we're a little over our time here, but it's great information, wonderful images, of course. So I don't want to. I didn't want to cut it off. Now, uh, Matt had he had three parts to his question earlier. Um, tips or tricks that you have for somebody developing that confidence as a portrait photographer? Is it something where, you know, should you just get anybody in front of your camera and practice? Or is there things that you found throughout your career that have made you a more confident photographer other than just practice, practice, practice? Um, aside from practice, obviously knowing your gear, knowing your lighting situation, knowing that everything works, because if you have like, a faulty battery that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. That kind of like cuts out your confidence in half because you don't know like, Ooh, what if it doesn't work? What if this, what if that? Like make sure that your gear is on point and uh, how you dress, that you feel comfortable, comfortable and confident. A lot of times I personally don't pay attention to how I look, but when it comes to working with people, there's still, uh, you, have to look a, you have to look apart. You have to look a certain way and you have to figure out what that is for you there's no recipe like you have to wear a shirt or pants but you have to find that balance between what you like like you wear something that you enjoy and it makes you feel comfortable and that you know you look good to the people that you're going to photograph so finding that just having your base prepared your gear your clothing and then kind of shoot more and more and more and more and don't be afraid to um, look stupid or dumb because most likely you won't it makes people feel uh, more connected to you rather than anything. Interesting. So give off the, so if I go in there juggling, juggling knives and cracking jokes, it's gonna. I mean, I don't think that would come natural to you. So that wouldn't work. <laughs> How but did you if know? There's, but mm, just by you showing it, I can tell that's not your part. <laughs> but just saying something that, you know, belongs to you, even if you are uh, to bring up your son, that would instantly make somebody feel more comfortable with you and trust you more. Or if your son is there, even, you know, depending or how active he is, something like that, something that is true to you and don't be afraid to share it. Like I would be always afraid to share that I'm uh, an immigrant, that I'm from Russia because I would feel like people would know that I don't belong or that, you know, I'm not um, enough to be here, I feel like that's an immigrant complex. You feel like you're not enough to be here. Everybody's smarter or like knows more or is more handsome, more beautiful than you. So there's that and I would always try to hide it. And thankfully I have a weird name so people kind of don't know that I'm Russian right away. But sharing that, telling people that this is, you know, this is my like my daily struggle. Like instantly the, the guard is off. People don't feel like you have it up from them like they know that you're vulnerable and you have your own kind of troubles in life and that makes people feel better but obviously don't go in and like tell them all your deepest secrets that's not me <laughs> i <laughs> hate myself <laughs> yeah no none of that none of that don't go in there but like find a common ground that's what that's what it is about i feel like yeah you commonize and i think mm -hmm. that comes across with you like you're you're just very much like like dressed down, you're you're like the casual Friday of photographers. You're just like, hey, I'm just like the casual Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my headline in my resume. I'm the casual Friday. Of the casual Friday of photographers. But it's like I I put your website here, and uh, we'll get your Instagram and everything too. But it's like everybody definitely check out. You have to see the her entire body of work. It it really is like it it's truly amazing and. Kevin, Kevin did, uh, he, he is listening. He is watching. He said, I love you guys. So Aww. Kevin, thank you for bringing her to me because it, it really is. Your work is super, super, super inspiring. And it's, it's even better when you can appreciate someone's work and appreciate the photographer when they're cool as hell. I think everybody just, you appreciate someone's work even more when you see that like, Hey, the person behind the work is, is just awesome. So it goes, it thank goes you. a long way. Thank Definitely. You. So Velasta, where can we find more of your work and you follow you on Instagram? Yeah, I mean, so I'm at Vlasta on Instagram. I just got my cool tag, just my name on Instagram, which is fancy. Uh, so you can find me there and obviously on my website, but like any busy photographer, the website is not updated every day, which is my Instagram is super fresh. Everything is there. So 
always message me. I'm always down to say hi, answer any questions. I don't have any secrets. Anything that I have, you can have or more. Awesome. And I'm dropping your website and your Instagram. So if you guys look in, if you're joining us on Zoom, uh, I'm dropping Velasta's website and Instagram in the Q&A section. And we will get that dropped into the comments section on Facebook as well. So please go throw Velasta a follow and check out her work. You will not be disappointed. You might want to throw your camera out the window. No, but please don't. We'll <laughs> now, we got to get you back on. Um, I know Velasta does as I said earlier, critiques, portfolio reviews. So I, I really, really, really want to get you in on a uh, critique or portfolio review session. So we will have that in the works. So for those of you out there watching who love our series of critiques, uh, be on the lookout for that. Even if I have to come out to LA with Kevin in an RV and, and do it live from out there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen. So Vlasta, thank you again. This is thank super, you. super, super informative and fun. And uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. This has been awesome. Awesome. Pleasure for us as well. And thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in and contributing your questions. This has been another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you all next time.